Good. Uh, right. So thanks very much, Matt, for agreeing to do this. Uh, I suppose I should first introduce Dr. Matthew Feldman, uh, one of the more esteemed members uh, of the academic community, great mind on the far right uh, in our times, and an expert on more things than I can possibly mention. Thank you, Dan. Um, That's kind. I don't recognize those comments, <laughs> but I must say, I'm only sorry that I can't be there with colleagues in person because uh, the work of the Radicalism New Media Group and Searchlight, um, and the work, of course, that's being done together is of the highest caliber and of the highest order of importance. So I really am very sorry um, if it weren't for the fact that I am literally around the other side of the world, I'd be with you there in person. I'm sure we're, I'm sure we're all missing you, Matt. Uh, obviously, the you know, first question, you know, you were the first director of the R&M group. You were, you were there from the start, and I remember conferences just before it began. Um, but so that's means, how did the work with Searchlight get started? Uh, I think a lot of it was recognition of the, the work that Jerry Gable uh, had done for decades and decades, not just as an anti-fascist, but as somebody who was trying to, to understand the far right on the ground and its different faces and iterations going back to the 1960s. And I think in recognition of that, one of the things that we really tried our, our best to do, and I'm delighted we were successful in doing, was to get Jerry an honorary doctorate at the University of Northampton. Um, that was not, and I think it's very important to say with any ulterior motives, it was simply just in recognition of his excellence uh, as an anti-fascist scholar, um, publisher, and of course somebody that collected many, many archives. So that's, I think, probably where it started. And at that point, uh, we entered into discussions after not too long about ways in which we might be able to be of mutual service to each other. Uh, the University of Northampton, of course, for kind of archiving some of the back issues of Searchlight and the materials that accumulated over all those decades. But just as, impor just as importantly, I think, the way in which the University of Northampton could, could add some academic perspectives to the valuable work Searchlight was doing. So I think there was a mutual recognition that we could work together very profitably. And um, that was the, the, the sort of the second conclusion after the first one that Jerry was somebody that absolutely on his own merits and the work that he's done, uh, you know, kind of uh, as, as helming searchlight for so long um, deserved an honorary doctorate. And I think that was the, the really the, the initial thing that got us starting working together. It's obvious, it's obvious. Uh, from that that you both bring a lot to that table. But how can academics help the work of searchlight? And obviously, kind of a broader sense, should they? Should academics get involved? Well, I, I can't speak for academics generally. I do think it's important for uh, individuals that are affiliated to universities and, and maybe even intellectuals as a general principle to remain independent. Uh, and that's something I make no apologies for. That does not mean um, staying away from all partnerships. But I think it's important that in developing partnerships, you say, we are still able to speak with our own voice rather than you know, sort of as one. Um, so in that respect, one of the things that Jerry uh, and the whole Searchlight team, Sonia and others, have been doing brilliantly for so long is being able to say, this is what it looks like on the ground in Britain and, and of course, abroad in terms of the far right. Uh, it's uh, minor successes, it's much larger uh, defeats, um, and it's continuing sort of history uh, over the decade. But one of the th things that I think that the academics acting independently can do is they can come in uh, from maybe from a different angle, uh, sometimes from a more theoretical perspective, I think is fair to say, um, and be able to look at the material with a fresh pair of eyes and say, well, have you uh, considered some of these, granted, sometimes very polysyllabic notions of cumulative extremism or the way in which anti-fascism and fascism have worked, uh, you know, have kind of influenced each other. So I think that fresh pair of, of, of eyes of people that have worked on things, particularly kind of theoretical notions of what fascism might be and, and how anti-fascism fits into and disturbs that kind of uh, uh, conception have been really important. And I think that the um, collaboration that the University of Northampton has been able to offer uh, Jerry Gable and Searchlight generally, um, writing articles, for example, in the, in the esteemed Searchlight magazine, uh, providing where, where requested uh, advice and uh, expertise where it's, uh, where, where it's deemed to be helpful, um, are some of the ways in which a university can really work with a, a third sector organization like Searchlight. Of course, Searchlight is um, really the preeminent anti-fascist uh, reporting organization it has been for many, many years. But I think that, it, again, as a general principle, so long as individuals and, and universities maintain that independent critical voice, they can do that with a whole wide range of different sectors and, uh, and, and charity groups.